have a couple tools on the ground today because we're going to be replacing the lower ball joints on this Toyota Tacoma. Now apparently they're the same for four cylinder and four wheel drive. So these are the ones I bought. I just went into Napa. I like it because it came with new hardware in the bag. I did get a driver side and passenger side. So you guys are going to ask me how do I know that I need to replace this ball joint and the answer is the driver side broke while I was driving. So I've already replaced the driver's side, now I'm going to replace the passenger side. I'm going to do them both at the same time so they have a relatively the same life expectancy. And uh, So what we have here is all the tools we're going to need for the job. We have an impact gun, we have a 17mm shallow and deep socket, 19mm shallow and deep socket, we're probably not going to need the deep socket, and a 21mm and a torch. I'm using the torch because I have it available. If you guys don't have the torch, you guys can use penetrating oil and just maybe leave it overnight and let the oil sink soak in. But unfortunately, I don't have that kind of time. I have an axle stand and I have a jack. Now, we are also going to need to use... Um, these come with a grease fitting, but uh, it's a straight up and down grease fitting. I want to put a grease fitting with a 45 on it, so that way I'm actually able to grease this ball joint while it's inside the truck. So, 20 mil, 21 mil is going to be for pulling the tire off. The 19 mil is going to be for the actual ball joint. The 17 mil is going to be for the two bolts and the tire rod. And I'll show you guys what this is like. So let's get this thing jacked up. Uh, axle stand underneath and tire off. Now I do want it to come quite high so I can fit that impact gun underneath everything. So this is where we're going to put the heat, is right onto the spindle so that we can loosen up this bolt because I do not want that bolt to snap inside the spindle. And then so that's a 17, the other side's a 17, this side is 19, and then the tie rod over here is a 17 as well. So we'll probably do the tie rod first, can you see that? And then we'll do that and then go from there. So let's get the tie rod off and then we'll start on all these other bolts and start heating this thing up. I did forget that we're gonna need this set. And these are pretty cheap, you can get them for like $19.99, maybe $29.99 at Harbor Freight or TSC or Princess Auto, depending on where you live. And uh, these are handy and I use them all the time. I mostly just use the middle size. I haven't really used the large one at all. So let's get this out. So I don't really think this one was that bad yet. Actually, it actually still feels pretty good, but because I changed the other side, I just did want to change this side. So there's the new one, there's the old one. I don't really know if this one's OEM or not, but the truck's got 500,000K on it, so I don't think that's the original one. 
So now we're just gonna pretty much back this thing up, put everything back in there separately. We are gonna put the jack underneath this control arm to help hold up the control arm, and we're gonna put a different grease fitting inside this one. Because this one here has a straight fitting, and it's very hard to grease while it's inside the truck. So let's get this done, and then we'll put some anti-seize on these bolts when we reinstall it. I like this kit because it did come with all new bolts, and it actually did come with the grease fitting, but we're not gonna use that one, unfortunately. So we have the new piece here. We're just gonna pull the spindle out. We got the new grease fitting on it with the 90 like I wanted. Put it right underneath there. Line it up. And I'm just gonna take the pre the new bolts with some anti-seize. Put them on there. Finger tight them. Let's try that again. than finger tight but that's what I had to do apparently. I'm just gonna put one in the other side now. I'm gonna tighten that one up. There's probably some kind of torque spec out there for those but guys when the impact stops ugga duggin that's torque spec. So now we're just gonna line that ball joint up with the bottom hole and we're gonna just bring up this control arm a bit with the jack that's underneath the lower control arm. We're just gonna drop her in there. When you look at that, it just drops right in there. Put the nut on, go back, get rid of the 17 mil, go to the 19. Now we just got to make sure that we line up the holes for the cotter pins. Uh, loosen just a bit. There you go. Just jam through the new cotter pin that was supplied with the kit. Uh, hands are getting a little oily. Okay, let the tire down. Now it's just the tie rod. So now we're gonna switch back to our 17 mil deep socket. You can throw a little bit of anti-seize on there. Now we can send that home. Now we just have to put a cotter pin in this and we're pretty much done. So we have all the cotter pins back in there now for the tie rods, the ball joints, everything like that. Now it's time for the tire. It wasn't a bad job. Um, the heat definitely makes it a lot easier. If you guys don't have heat, it is gonna take you a little bit longer to get that done. Um, my impact gun wouldn't even do it without putting the heat to it. So it, I would highly recommend maybe a little propane torch that you can easily pick up from like Canadian Tire, Harbor Freight, TSC, Princess Auto, anything like that. And uh, I highly recommend doing any C's, but I'm a firm believer in it. Before you guys say over torque this, this is set up to about 100 foot pounds. That's what I like my tires at. And there you go. Ball joints are done. In total, I think that job took me. 25 minutes tire off to tire done, but I did have all the tools set out and knew exactly what I'd need So if you guys think you can do this job at home go for it. I think it's very obtainable 
Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you later back here on Zach's Workshop.